This anti-skate video will be a little bit different than a lot of the other ones out there. I'm going to try uh, several different methods, uh, nine actually, uh, and just see what my results are and how they mesh up with one another. And uh, I'm not going to go into the details of uh, skating and, and uh, anti-skate forces and, and, and all the physics behind that. I'll, I'll link down below an excellent article uh, by Hakan Augustus and he's outlined uh, he's outlined pretty much everything in a 17 page PDF and uh, pretty much on the begin you know the end of page three start of page four in a couple of paragraphs I think that's the meat of it shows you exactly what's happening a drawing by John Ellison uh, shows you what the tracking forces are and, and why you have to overcome it with these pivoted tone arms. Well, anyhow, let's get to trying uh, to set up uh, the anti-skate on this Technics. Oh, one more and one more note. This is uh, this is just related to this particular turntable and cartridge and 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 uh, different tone arms, different uh, setups can be radically different. There's a lot going on, and with the uh, this particular uh, tone arm it's set up as zero to three and it matches the the basically they want to match the VTF the tracking force of your cartridge but this doesn't mean that that the tracking the anti-track the anti-skating forces are these in grams uh, in reality it's probably about 10 percent of of what your VTF is so while we have two set on this Technics SL1200, the reality of the tracking force of the mechanism inside there is probably about 0.2 grams. Uh, so those of you who have weights and you know fishing line or whatever, different methods, uh, that will be, uh, you're, you're certainly not using direct grams uh, anti-skate force from this. This is just a proprietary system. The Technics has set up. Okay, let's check out some records. Technics has a simple method for determining anti-skate. Looking in the Technics turntable manual, it says adjust the anti-skate to whatever your VTF, your, your vertical tracking force is set at. So we have this particular Audio Technica cart set to two grams. So we just turn that to two. And that is our setting uh, for this particular method. Now we'll do the Schroeder-Letterman method, which is promoted by Peter Letterman of uh, Soundsmith uh, Cartridges. And this works, you can use any record, that's the beauty of this particular test. And I do think it works very well. Uh, you use the runout groove and you place the, uh, you place the needle uh, in between the runout grooves. You use the flat area and you want it to go towards uh, the spindle, but not as fast as the runout groove itself. So let's go ahead and we'll have this set it to, to start out here. Okay, it's going quickly, so I'll adjust it to two and a half. Getting closer. It's just going a little bit faster. Okay, here we go. That was good. Looks like we're at 2.9. Uh, I placed it in a flat area and then the, the next runout groove caught up to it, but it was still slowly going towards the spindle. So we'll say this is 2.9. Okay, let's go ahead and set up our anti-skate using the Hi-Fi News test record and uh, using the Puffin uh, test function, uh, Skate. Uh, this uses 300 hertz test tone, so let's go ahead and set the Puffin up to 300 hertz. And the tracks we will be using on uh, side one are six, seven, eight, nine, and they're just progressively getting louder. And, uh, and then there's also, uh, that's at the end of side one. And then on side two, they have uh, bands one, four, and uh, eight. So you can 
test the beginning, middle, and, and, and end of the record with whatever we set it up as. And it doesn't, it doesn't refer to it as, as anti-skate here. It's more, it's talking about trackability, but it's still a 300 hertz uh, test at the same level. And, and this is where uh, you get into uh, how, how uh, real world are these uh, anti-skate methods with these test records. And definitely, when you get into the, uh, the the louder portions, it's it's just it's it's a torture test to see what your setup can do, and uh, it's just giving us a, a big picture of what's going on. And is not necessarily we're not necessarily using the most torturous track to determine using you know maximum anti skating force. That's not the goal here. Uh, the goal is to get the big picture of what's going on and hopefully be able to. To make some uh, some guesstimates of what we should do. Okay, so let's we got it set to 300 hertz. Let's go ahead and we'll, we'll leave it at the at the uh, the Technics two grams starting out here. And these tracks are right here. One, two, three, four. Those are the last four tracks on side one. Okay, so I just plopped it down there. Uh, if we if we get a a plus or a minus then we know we're really getting some distortion when it's just one or uh, plus uh, you know one or two db difference here not that big of a deal but we know when we're getting more than that it'll trigger three or more we'll get a little plus or minus plus meaning we need to add some anti-skate minus means we need to remove some anti-skate okay well, right now we're just in the middle that's a grooveless area okay well, now we're in the next track so it's, they're still they're basically about the same and indeed this this difference between the two could i know this cartridge has about a half db uh, difference that i haven't corrected uh, i don't have it corrected for these tests okay gotta reposition it in the third track here okay now now we're really seeing some some skating error it's drifting away to this center spindle not making good contact with the right let's see if Two and a half will. Okay, let's redo that. Okay, when we get to the third and the fourth track. Uh, we're pretty much going to have to do the old three plus and, and it's still not going to correct it Yeah, see that that it just skated right off the track four, but uh, track one and two there. I think uh, I think we can get a Yeah, I, I think 2.75 is a good uh, is a good setting Using those two tracks Let's go ahead and uh, use it set to 2.75 on the other side. Okay, hey, looking good right there. Track four. Still looking good. And do the last track, track nine. Starting to get a tiny bit of, uh, of uh, skating there, but that's fine. Uh, I think uh, 2.75 is, is really good for this record. Now we have the Vinyl Check album, and it also uses uh, 300 hertz uh, as, its, as its tone. And it's just a 41 second long track that continually gets louder, uh, and it we're just going to use the puff and test function again here to see which channel gets the distortion. So let's go down to skating. Let's go to 300 hertz. And it's track six, which is this one right here. It's right before 
the big long end track. Let's have it at two there to start out. Okay, now we can hear the distortion rattling the cartridge some. Well, we've got it pegged at three plus. You can see we have our little plus indicator, which means we need more, more tracking for it, more anti-skate. But uh, let's go ahead and redo that set at maximum here three plus and see if it overcompensates too much at the beginning here. And if it was too much force, we'd see a, a minus. It would be, we'd have high levels of distortion in the left channel and we have a little minus sign there. Okay, so as it gets louder, we just start breaking up on the right channel. Okay, so we will, we have this set at our maximum. For vinyl check, we will say three plus. With our Ortofon test tracks, we'll use the Puffin again uh, on the skate function. Uh, this particular, this particular uh, tracking test is at 315 hertz, so we'll go ahead and adjust that to 315. And what we're doing here with the puffin is we're just looking at it's a it's a high pass filter, so uh, frequencies below uh, at 315 and below are all cut out. We're just looking at the higher uh, frequency spectrum. So hopefully we're looking at a bunch of harmonics, so that you know the distortion is gonna we're, we're gonna be measuring a bunch of distortion here because that's that's what these tracks do. Uh, they end up breaking up one channel or the other. So we have it set to 315. The tracks are, let's see how many tracks we have here, like six tracks, and they're right there, all banded nicely together. Let's go ahead and start that, and we'll have this set at two. We'll start off at two. And we're just, once, and, and with with this, we're monitoring to see how close these are, these uh, the distortion, uh, the levels are between each other, and this shows which one's worse. And then if it's much worse, we'll have a little indicator here, uh, plus to add anti-skating force, or minus to remove anti-skating force. Okay, looks like with the, the third track there. We started to go into significant distortion there on the right track. And I've got that up to three plus now. Okay, so we've got the anti-skating set to the maximum on this. And these higher levels are not typical levels you'll see. These are torture tracks. Uh, so do we necessarily uh, need to have this balanced here with more uh, anti-skate force? No. As a matter of fact, you may you know end up wearing your diamond because most of the modulation on tracks you listen to is not even close to that. But this, uh, you know, this is a nine inch tone arm. It's gonna not have the performance of of a of a, like a 12 inch tone arm, and you'll if you compare the two, you'll see them just behave differently. Different cartridges, different types of tone arms, uh, different types of pivoted tone arms. They're all gonna behave a little bit differently, and this is just one way to see that behavior, but not necessarily use this as oh, I've got to be sure I'm tracking on the last torture track with a high amount of anti-skating force. So we've got this set to three plus. Let's just go ahead and look at these first two tracks again and make sure we haven't shifted uh, into uh, 
distortion on the left channel. No. So, so since we went back at the low at the low track again and we're good with this three plus, uh, then uh, we'll go ahead and say uh, this Ortofon is good at three plus. The anti-skate tracks used on the Ultimate Analog Test LP is the first track of side two. And uh, they also use 315 hertz as their test tone, like the Ortofon test record. Okay, so we'll set this to 315. Oops. We'll kind of have that set at two to start. So this this track starts out a little bit quieter and doesn't get quite as loud as uh, several of the other test records. And Let's just bump it up towards the latter part of this track. Once again, we're, we're looking for a, you know, a plus or minus symbol there. Plus tells us add some more tracking force. Minus tells us we've added too much. But uh, we're just not seeing anything on this track. Uh, no, no distortion. No gross distortion, uh, and, and at two. So, I say we just, uh, that's our default from, from the Technics, and since it looked uh, good on that, we will say that this confirms that two is good. Okay, now we are using the CBS STR100 test record the 60 year old classic and it has on side B side two uh, an empty track right here right before these last two bands and let's uh, go ahead and start it up we have it set at the default two and oh, it's it's going towards the spindle it's not staying centered let's go ahead and adjust that in a big jump there to two and a half I'll pick it up and slowly drop her down. Still going toward the center. Let's go up to 275. Okay. We're right at three here. We also have uh, tracking tests on this record, and we will use the, the lateral tracking tests. Uh, not this group right there, but we'll use this, this group right there. Just, uh, so there, there was our, our uh, smooth groove, uh, not a smooth groove, but our, our smooth area that we were just doing this test. And now we'll do this set of, uh, of five bands right there. Let's go ahead and start with the third band and uh, <clears throat> now these tests are at, at 100 hertz so let's change that to 100 and go ahead and start this test on that third band i'm going to jump straight to the last band okay looks like we're matched there let's go to the the fifth band of the vertical test Same thing. So we're not measuring any uh, gross distortion on those tracking tracks, and we've set up with the smooth area on the CBS test record. This is the laser disc method, and 
a lot of uh, anti-skating discs that you buy off of Amazon or eBay, you can get a, a flat surface to do this. And I think this works very well. And you uh, even the, you have the, the classic Johnny Winters side four that is also blank. But if you get a copy of that, it's probably pretty worn after all these years. Uh, a lot of grooves uh, etched into it from, from uh, different uh, styli. And, and on this particular test, and with all these tests, make sure you always you know, clean off any debris that it uh, picks up, or rather etches onto the record and, and gets onto the needle itself. Okay, we'll start off at two here. Uh, we're going to check, uh, you know, close in, on the out, and then also in, in the center region. And I think well, maybe I'll just target, you know, I haven't done this yet, maybe a little bit of uh, skating on the endpoints, but better tracking in the center. You know, as, as we're pivoting, going in there, we're, we're arcing across there, and we have a certain amount of uh, changing tracking error as we're, as we're going through there. But we have the null points from Bearwald and Lofgren. And uh, so maybe uh, in between those two null points, I'll aim for uh, that's the corrected skating with a little bit of skating on the, on the inside and outside. So let's go ahead and just try to, okay, that's try to get it good on the inside. Okay, that's, that's it. Now, if you're using a laser disc, there's of course a hole in the center, and you don't want your uh, your your needle to fall in that and, and and break off your cantilever and damage your cartridge. So, just an easy way around that is just just to go ahead and put your 45 adapter on top to make sure if you do go to the center that you don't uh, damage your cartridge. So, up to let's go up to two and a half and see how that behaves in the in the mid region. Okay, that's good. That's tracking a little, but but in the dead center of that null region, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, well, maybe a touch too much. Let's see if we're still okay. We're tracking in there, good. So maybe I'll just take that out a touch. Okay, so. Still got our skating there, which is what I want, but more dead in the center region. Yeah, I think this is, I feel good about this setup using a laser disc. So we're, let's just say it's two and a half. Also with the uh, laser disc method, you can also do the, the Schroeder Letterman method uh, and you don't have to worry about that, that run out groove. You can just, uh, of course, these labels are smaller. So the run out, you'll want to place it in this region right there where my finger's at. So uh, let's go ahead and start it up and see, see we got too much there. Okay, I think that's that's uh, the Schroeder Letterman method using the laser disc. Hey, and that's different than what we got on using a vinyl record, the Beatles record earlier. So, so note there's an, an inherent amount of uh, uncertainty in all these tests. So these are the different numbers that we got uh, using these nine different methods. And uh, I think it gives you a good idea of the ballpark of, of where we're shooting for. Uh, the fact that uh, 
you, you know if you're between two and three, you're going to be really close. And a lot of that is going to depend on uh, even your material, uh, how heavily modulated your music is, uh, maybe even the different era of discs you, uh, you're playing. And so you have a range of, of where you should be. And by all means, you know, use your, uh, use your ears. Uh, I, I trust my customers' ears, and I trust my ears. And uh, it's, it's easy to know when something uh, sounds good. So you can try it, you can experiment, and uh, find a strategy that works best for what you listen to and when, and when you listen to it. And, uh, and it may not be that uh, lowest, you know, certainly if you, if you have too much anti-skate correction, you're going to wear out your car. You're going to wear out your your stylus uh, too much on the right channel, and if you don't have enough, you're going to wear it out faster on the left channel. So, uh, I think a lot of times you will have some mismatch uh, once that stylus is finally worn. But ultimately, you know how well it performs uh, and how well it sounds uh, is 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 what's key. You know, in, the, in with vacuum tubes, if you bias a tube strong, you, you can get a great, great sound out of it. Uh, some more linearity, uh, and it just sound great, but you're going to wear your tubes out faster. Uh, and the same way with the people, hyper milers with their, with their car tires. With more uh, air pressure, you can get longer life, but you won't get as smooth of a ride. So it, I think it's, you know, those Analogies work with uh, your cartridge too. Obviously, you don't want to have it grossly uh, out of alignment uh, with your skating, and uh, but it's just what uh, what's most important to you. Very long cartridge life, uh, best sound, how much of a difference does it make? Well, all these things are left for you to sort out on your own. And hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks so much.